everybody. In this video, we're going to dive into the different parts of Flexbox, starting with what Flexbox is and how Flexbox works, and then we're going to dive into the different properties that we can apply to Flexbox in order to lay out and style our elements as we want. So to get started, let's add a div inside of our body here, and we'll give it a class of Flexbox container, since this will be the container that all our Flexbox items will reside inside. Then inside of this container, we'll add another div, give it a class, and we'll call this one flexbox item. And we'll also give it a class of flexbox item one. That way we know which item we're referring to when we style them individually. And if you save that, you'll see that we have a gray box show up on the right here. And that's because I've already applied some styles to these flexbox items so that we can distinguish them and see them. Now let's copy this and add in two more flexbox items and save that. And you'll see that we have now three flexbox items inside of our flexbox container but we don't have any styling to actually make this a flex container. So to get started with creating a flex container, let's go into our styles here. We have our flex box container selector, and we can just say display and set it to flex, and this is how we create a flex box container. Now if I save that, you'll see that all of our items are now the same height, and they all show up in one row. You'll also notice that if I shrink our browser, you'll see that these items will scale their size to fit within the browser, and as I make it wide enough for them to all fit, you'll just show up on the left side of the screen. And this is really the main thing that Flexbox has going for it. It allows you to style the flexibility and sizing of different elements in the container from the actual container selector here, this Flexbox container, without ever having to style the actual Flexbox items. So inside of the container for Flexbox, you can do things such as laying out your different elements across the different rows and columns, as well as aligning them inside of that layout. And then the items themselves, you can specify how you want them to flexibly grow inside of the container or how you want them to shrink inside of the container. To make this easier to see, I've created some background styles here. And if we save this, you'll see that we now have our Flexbox container, which is this yellow background item, and then our different Flexbox items with their numbers in the corner as these grayish colored with a border that is a little bit darker gray. This way we can see when we shrink our browser, you can see that these items shrink together, and as we increase it, they'll grow again. Now before we get started with actually laying out and styling our different elements inside of our container, we first need to understand the concept of the main axis and the cross axis inside of a Flexbox container. I have these styles here that will show us the main axis and cross axis for our Flexbox container. And as you can see, this main axis goes horizontally across the entire Flexbox container, while the cross axis goes vertically. This is because our Flexbox container is laid out in a row as opposed to a column. Flexbox gives us a property on the container called the flex direction where we can set if we want our Flexbox to be a row or column based layout. And depending on this, these main axis and cross axis will actually flip. So in a column based layout, the cross axis will go horizontally and the main axis will go vertically. All you really need to remember is that this main axis will go the same direction as your layout. So in a row layout, it'll be horizontal and a column layout, it'll be vertical. And in order to style the layout of these elements, you style them based on the axes, so the main axis or the cross axis, and not based on vertical or horizontal. So if we wanted to style our elements on the main axis, we would use the justify content property inside of our Flexbox container. Right now, our main axis has a flex start attribute applied to it, which means that all the elements will align at the start of the main axis. If, for example, we wanted to center these items inside of this main axis, we would change this from flex start to center. And if you save that, you see that now all of our flexbox items are in the center of our container. Another thing that we could do is if we wanted to lay out our elements with space between them, we could use the space between property here. And now all of the extra space inside of our flex container will be put evenly between all of the different items inside of our container. And if we wanted to have space on the outside of our container as well, we could use space around, which puts an even amount of space on all sides of the flex items and not just in between them. This makes laying out items in a horizontal manner very easy inside of Flexbox due to this justify content property. But if we wanted to, for example, lay out things on this cross axis, we would use the align items property. And right now the default for this is stretch, which means our items will stretch to fill the most amount of space vertically that they can. That's why some of our items that were smaller grew to full size. If we wanted to keep the size of our items, we would use flex start, and then all of our items would align themselves at the very top of our flex box container based on this cross axis. 
We could also use center here in order to center them vertically, which is one of the most important things that you can do with Flexbox. Before Flexbox, aligning items vertically inside of a container was nearly impossible, but with Flexbox is as easy as one line of CSS and it'll perfectly align all of your items inside of this container. The last way to align our items inside of our Flexbox container is to use the align content property. And this property is only for using on multi-line Flexbox containers. But as you saw, when we shrink our browser size, these items just shrink to take up the amount of space needed. But if we change our Flexbox here to use the flex wrap property and tell it to wrap, you'll see that now our items will wrap onto different lines instead of shrinking their size, as you can see here. And this align content property tells it how much space to put between the lines. For example, if we use flex start, all of our items will line up at the top of the container, while flex end will line them all up at the bottom of the container. An easy way to see this is if we add a height property to our flexbox container. So if we put height here and we just make it, let's say, 700 pixels, now you can see that flex end for our line content has made our flexbox items all align at the bottom of our container, while flex start will make them align at the start. And this has very similar properties to justify content. For example, we could put space between here, and now we have spacing between our flexbox item rows. And if we shrink this even further, you'll see that there's now even space between them as well, which is great. But align content is something that I don't really use that often, and really justify content and align items are the properties I use most since they align your individual rows along the main and cross axis. Now let's revert that height back to the default, get rid of our align content, justify content, align items, and wrap. So we just have a normal Flexbox container here. And we'll increase that size a little bit. And we'll also remove these axes since we no longer actually need them. Now if we go back into our styles here, and let's say we want a column layout instead, we'll just use our flex direction, change it to column, and now you'll see that our different Flexbox items show up in a column as opposed to the different row. And if we use justify content, and we say center, for example, you'll notice that they don't center horizontally, and that's because they're centering inside of the column vertically. And if we put that height back onto our flex container, let's make it 800 pixels, save that, you'll see that now they're centered vertically, and that's because justify content is using the main axis, which in this case is column as opposed to row. If we used align items, we put center in here and save it. You'll see that now our items are centering horizontally because the cross axis is horizontal inside of a column based flexbox container. Now we can revert all that back to normal. So we just have our standard flexbox container here and we can start to talk about the different properties you can apply to our different flexbox items as opposed to the flexbox container. As I mentioned, the container is really only for laying out spacing between your items as well as the positioning of your items inside of the container. The actual Flexbox item properties are meant to either override those positioning and layout properties or to apply different flexible sizing to these elements. As you can see, by default, when we decrease the size of our browser, our items shrink in size. But if we wanted to prevent that on, let's say, only our first item, we could go in here, use the flex shrink property and set it to zero to say we don't want it to shrink at all. And if we save that, you now see our first item does not shrink no matter how small our browser gets, but these other two items shrink together. We could also use the flex grow property if we wanted to tell our items to grow bigger. So if we increase our size here, we have all this extra space. Let's say we wanted our third flex box item to fill that space. All we would do is set flex grow to be one and now that item takes up all the extra space, no matter what size our browser is. We can also use flex grow on multiple items. So let's say we want our second item to also grow. We can apply it to here. And as we increase our browser size, you'll see that they'll both grow proportionally to one another. So that way this item, the flex box item two and flex box item three are the same exact size since they have the same exact flex grow number. If we, for example, change this to be two, and increase the size of our browser, you now see that our Flexbox item two is about twice the size of our Flexbox item three. You will notice, however, that Flexbox item two is not exactly twice the size of Flexbox item three, as you would think by making Flex grow twice as big. But all the Flex grow property actually does is take all of the leftover space. So if we remove these Flex grows here, you see we have all this leftover space and it divides it between all the different Flex grows. So if we have a Flex grow of two, 
here, and we have a flux grow of one on the third item, flux box item two will get twice the amount of available space that flux box item three gets. So if we save that, you'll see that this flux box item two has gained twice of the available space that was left over as flux box item three. And the reason that flux box item two is not actually twice the size of flux box item three is because we have a width set on our flux box items. So it takes this 200 pixels and then adds the amount of available remaining space onto that 200 pixels. If we wanted to override that, we could use what is called the flux basis property. And this tells our flux box where to start growing from. So if we change this to zero, our object will imagine that it is zero pixels wide when it starts adding additional space to it. And if we did this for both of our items here and saved it, you'll see that now Fluxbox item two is exactly twice the size of Fluxbox item three because it started adding additional space onto them in a two to one proportion. So it added twice as much to Fluxbox two as it did to Fluxbox three, but they had no starting point at all. They started at zero, which means that Fluxbox two here is twice the size of Fluxbox three. When they started at 200 pixels, it still added twice as much space to Fluxbox two as Fluxbox three, but they had a 200 pixel beginning size, so they weren't actually exactly twice the size as the other one. For the most part, flex grow, flex shrink, and the different justify content and align item properties are all you really need in order to create dynamic and complex layouts in either a row or a column based container. But if you needed to override the cross axis alignment of a property, you can do that with the align self property. And let's say we wanted our second flux box item to be in the center of the container instead of stretching the full height of the container, we can just use that. And now you can see that this align self property overrides our align content of our other containers. And you can see that it aligns in the center here while these other items are aligning stretch. And this can be applied to all of our different containers. For example, we could go up to our flex box item one here and make this one flex end and you'll see that now this aligns itself at the end of the container instead of stretching, which is the default for our line items applied to our Fluxbox container. The very last property that is left to talk about is the order property that can be applied to our Fluxbox items. This allows us to change the order of our items inside of our Fluxbox container without actually changing our HTML. So for example, if we wanted Fluxbox item one to be our third item, we would change the order to three, Fluxbox item two, let's say we want to be our first item. So we change the order here to one, and then we'll change the order of this Fluxbox three to be an order of two. And if you save that, you now see that our second item is at the beginning of our container. Our third item is the second item in our container. And our first item is the very last item in our container. And this is because we use the order property to rearrange the order visually of our items without changing the order in our actual HTML. This is a property I highly advise not using unless you really need it because this actually messes up the flow for people using screen readers since the screen reader will still go in the order of the HTML, which means they'll get eight Fluxbox item one first, Fluxbox item two second, and Fluxbox item three third, even though the order of display is different than that. This also messes up when you're tabbing through different form items. For example, if this was an input element for a text box, our tab would go to the Fluxbox item one first and then Fluxbox item two second, even though they're displayed in order where it should be two first and then three second. So that's why I highly advise not using the order property unless you really need to rearrange the orders visually without actually messing with the HTML of the document. And that's really all there is to a Fluxbox container. For the most part, you just need to have a container that wraps your different Flux items. You give it a display of Flux to say that you're using a Fluxbox container. You then use the justify content properties and the align item properties inside of your container in order to tell it how you want to align these items inside of the container. And then lastly, you can use the different flex shrink, grow and basis properties in order to lay out your items individually inside of the flex box container to grow or shrink as you need. A shorthand for these different flex shrink, grow and basis properties is just a straight up flex property where the first number is your flex grow, the second number is your flex shrink, and the last number is your flex basis. This is a great shorthand property that you can use in order to apply all three of those different properties in one line. You can also leave off the later properties, such as if we only wanted to flex grow to be one, we just put flex one and it will intelligently assign the flex shrink and flex basis properties without us having to actually manually set them. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about Flexbox and how you can use Flexbox in order to create dynamic layouts for your site. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to leave a like down below and in the comments, let me know if there's anything else about Flexbox you want me to talk about in more depth in either a future video or in a comment for you guys. Thank you guys very much. Have a good day.